oftentimes in math, we're going to need to find something called the greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor you should be familiar with by this point, if you've uh, already studied laws of exponents, the greatest common factor is going to be the biggest number that goes into both of the terms that you're dealing with. Now, the only addition we're going to add in this section is that we're now talking about not just numbers, but also x's, x squareds, y's, whatever we might have. So we're not just going to look at numbers, we'll also look at variables. So just a quick uh, reminder here on the greatest common factor. Uh, if you have something like 10 and let's say 25, one way you can do this is by finding the prime factorization. You might, might be able to just tell right away what the biggest number is that goes into both of these, which is great. Um, but if you ever can't, you can always find the prime factorization of these numbers. So 10 can be split up into 5 times 2, and that's as far as we can go with that. 25 can be split up into 5 times 5. That's as far as we can go there. And since they both have a 5 in common, that would be the greatest common factor. Uh, again, we could try something else. We could try uh, 81 and 54. So this would be another one we could try. So 81 we could split up into 9 times 9. 9 we could split up into 3 and 3. Uh, this 9 we could also split up into 3 times 3. And then if we look at uh, 54, 54 we could split up into 9 times 6. We could split up this 9 into 3 times 3. And then the 6 could also get split up into 3 times 2. So you could see that they both have 3 3's in common here. So if you multiply those, 3 times 3 times 3, that would tell you that the greatest common factor for these two is 27. So uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and give this a shot. You might be able to figure this out without actually breaking these up. But for the first one, I'll, I'll break it down into basics here. So let's start with 12, and we'll break this up into 12, or excuse me, 6 times 2. And then I'm just going to break up this 6 into 2 times 3. So I'll bring this 2 down here just so we have them all together. So then also I can break up x into x times x. So x squared would break up into x times x. There's two x's multiplied together. That'll take care of this first one. Now the 2x, that one can't really be split up at all. I'm just going to leave that as 2x. And now if we're trying to find what they have in common, they both have a 2 in common. They both have an x in common, and that's as much as they have in common there, so our greatest common factor is just 2x, okay? I'm going to look here at the next one. So we've got 8x to the 6th and 50y to the 5th, and what we're going to do here is, again, we're going to split things up. So um, we've got an 8x uh, to the 6th. Let's split this up into, so 8 can split up into 4 times 2. The x's will have six x's here, so I could write all these out if I want to. I, I will for this one. So we'll have six x's here. One, two, five, six. Okay. We'll split up the four again into two times two. So we'll have two times two times two times two. X, 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 x. We got eight x's there. Excuse me, six x's. So we got one extra. Let me get rid of that. Um, got rid of a little too much there. So now we got six x's. Perfect. And now we're going to split up 50. So 50 we can split up into 25 times 2. And then we can split up the 25 again into 5 times 5. So we'll have 5 times 5 times 2. And then we'll write down x and 5y's here, because y to the fifth would be y times itself 5 times. Now we'll look at what they have in common. So they both have a 2 in common. Um, that looks like about it for the numbers. Now the x's, unfortunately, they only have one in common. So actually, this has the exact same GCF as the last problem, just 2x. Now if you saw something else in common, you would have to check that too. Now I'm going to start getting away from this a little bit because this is very long and a tedious way of doing things. Um, if you're not great with your mental math, it's not a bad idea though to stay with this method. Um, but for the people who you know have some mental math skills, it's not bad to break away from this now. Now, let's start with 9xy and 7b. So if we look at 9xy, let's first look at what's the biggest number that goes into both of 9 and 7. And I think here for a second, I, I don't think there are any other than 1. So we'll sneak a 1 down here. And then if we look at the variables they have in common, the x, y, and the b, they actually don't have any variables in common either. So it's possible that the greatest common factor, if there's, they don't have anything in common other than 1, 
that the greatest common factor is one, and this is uh, a special thing that's called that these two are relatively prime. So this is, oops, these two things are called relatively prime when they don't have any common factors other than one. All right, finally, we'll, sit, we'll go down to this last one here. So we got 51x to the sixth and 18x cubed y. So what we're going to do here now, again, is look for the biggest number that goes into both of these. So that'll be, let's see, uh, I think, I think about the biggest number that goes into both, I think three. Again, if you don't see that, you can check my math here and, and work it out, but it'll be three. Three goes into 51, 17 times. Three goes into 18, six times. And if we look at the x's, here's a shortcut for these take the, uh, the lowest exponent of anything they have in common. So if this one has three and this one has six, they don't have a full six in common, but since this one has three, they have at least three in common. And then since they don't have any y's, even though this one has a y, this one doesn't, so we won't take the y's, that's our GCF right here. So again, the shortcut would be, look for the biggest number that goes into both of the numbers, and then look for the lowest exponent that they all have in common. So they both have an x, the lower one's three, that would be our greatest common factor. Uh, and in the next video here, I'm going to split this up, I think, into two videos. I'm gonna talk about the least common multiple. Uh, there aren't a ton of applications to this, however, it is on the uh, Pennsylvania Keystone test, so if you're someone that has to take this or your teacher talks about finding the least common multiple for two terms, uh, I'll do that in the next video. But this greatest common factor one has a lot of um, important, uh, important applications that you'll use later in algebra.